Hi, my name is Don King. I'm a pastor of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and been retired for the last couple of years. And it's really been enjoyable for me to get a, to be a part of the uh, community at, at Trinity. And I've missed you all. And I look forward to the day when we can hopefully uh, get together in, in, present, in person once again. I was uh, very pleased, I felt honored when uh, Dean Owens invited me and a few others to uh, participate in, in this. And so uh, he said, he gave us free reign. We can do whatever we want. Uh, he did invite us to use the lectionary to, to look at the lessons for uh, this uh, the Sunday that we're on for. So the second Sunday of Advent, um, I looked at the lessons. I looked at all of them a few times. I looked at the Gospel of Mark. Uh, the, the Gospel lesson begins with the first uh, eight verses of Mark's Gospel. and So I, I read it, and I read it through a few times, and I kept uh, actually centering on the first six words of Mark's Gospel. I, I know that to come up with an Advent reflection in six words might uh, be a bit of a stretch, but bear with me. Um, in fact, in, in the Greek, it's only three words. Uh, let me read uh, this for you for a second. We're reading here from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1. The beginning of the good news. That's it for now. The beginning of the good news. The word he uses there, the Greek word for that is arche. It means beginning or origin or start. Maybe that's intentional of Mark. Uh, he's not going to tell us the whole of Jesus' ministry over the next 16 passages, next 16 uh, chapters, but uh, he's going to offer us the beginning. Maybe that word beginning serves as kind of a title for the 16 chapters, a description of, of what's to be found. Why would that be? Because the implication of Jesus' life and ministry and death and resurrection it continues. This is only the beginning of it. God's work isn't done. It goes on now. And that is especially good news, I think, at this time. If you, like me, are suffering from COVID fatigue, if you're feeling stuck in place, if you're frustrated, with the ongoing injustices that we're faced with in our world, those things that, that thwart God's plan and God's love and justice for the world. If you're wondering how we'll ever escape from all of this, then Mark's pronouncement is very good news for us because God's work isn't finished. God's work continues even, even especially through us. Fast forward. 16 chapters later, most people who study these things believe that Mark's gospel ends on chap, uh, chapter 16, verse 8. Oh, sure, you could open up your Bible at home and, and it well may have further passages to come. But many people who study these things believe that those were tacked on uh, centuries later because Mark presents a very strange ending. The um, Jesus, the, the two women disciples had found their way to the tomb on Easter morning. And the angel says, he isn't here. He has risen. And now you go and tell the disciples that he uh, has risen. And so the last words of Mark's gospel are, are, are this. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Again, Close the book. Try preaching on that some Easter morning. But maybe what Mark is saying there, he's been saying all along. This is just the beginning. And now you, O oh reader, who have learned about the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus the Christ, now you be the ones to go and tell the others. Which means that the Christmas story that we spend most of Advent preparing for, it also isn't the end or the climax. It too is just the beginning. Mark doesn't even tell us the actual beginning of Jesus' birth. You can't, you can't turn to Mark and stage a children's pageant. No, he tells of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He tells us the beginning of, of God's redemptive work through Jesus, and he tells us our call to carry on as the vessels carrying forth that word of that good news 
of Jesus the Christ. This ongoing work of carrying God's love, it's done in all kinds of ways, great acts and small. Things that have a huge impact and some things that have no discernible impact whatsoever. Any gestures we offer in love are carrying forth that good news. So, at this time, if we refrain from a large gathering of friends or family, that's a gift of love. If we choose to wear a mask in public, if we choose to purchase locally because our local friends who are operating the mom and pop shops are hurting, if we choose to give our money to charities that continue God's way of love, if we write a note to someone who's struggling, if we pick up the phone or maybe Zoom someone who's lonely, these are all, the list can go on, these are all small and easy. But each of them says that we're not helpless. Even in the midst of a pandemic, pandemic, we can renew our energy and our faith by giving our gifts of love. Mark draws us into that life and ministry of Jesus so that we can then carry on what he did. Everything Mark said stems from that one word, archi, beginning, origin, start, and now it's our turn. Amen. And thanks for listening.